Here's a short little video to show the difference between the two different types of uh, sharp memory LCD that I'm selling on my small memory LCD breakout boards. The display on the right is the 96 by 96 pixel PNLC type. That's the polymer networked liquid crystal. Um, this is the brighter of the two displays. It's got a lighter background and when it's on the black pixels under certain angles and lighting conditions have a very reflective uh, silver mirror quality. Um, very nice and really is very like a mirror. Um, on the left we've got the 128 by 128 pixel HRTFT type display. This looks uh, slightly darker when it's on, it's got very good blacks and on this type of display Sharp have added a polarizer to increase the display contrast. Um, other than that they're mounted on the same breakout board, they have the same data connections going to the microcontrollers. I've got them running off uh, two chip kits here, a Max on the right and an Uno on the left. Um, and the little IC in the middle is a trusty old 555 timer providing the XCOM in signal to both of them. One thing about these displays is they have a pixel memory so once you've written to, this, to the display you don't need to keep sending the same data to it because it holds it in its pixel memory. However, you do need to send a square wave of between 2 Hz and 60 Hz to the display in order to keep inverting the polarity um, across the screen. Um, so that's what the little 555 is doing. You can do it with the microcontroller if you want but I was having problems with the uh, hardware timers on the chip kits so that's why the little 555 ended up in the middle. Anyway, I'll get the display on so you can see how they look. I'm just running a little demo I've written here. Um, it displays various sine waves, squares and patterns. Um, and immediately you can see how shiny the uh, PNLC type is compared to the other one. I'll take the camera off at this point and start moving around a little so you can see, the, uh, see how the display changes as I move the camera angle. Right, when it goes black you can really see the reflection of the uh, jumper wires there. And it's not quite the best light for this, but um, in different conditions when it's a bit brighter outside, the black and white pixels really do swap round. And from certain angles it look, the black is so reflective it looks like they're the white ones and the white looks like the darker of the two. Yeah, you can really see it reflecting off the light on the ceiling now. And we'll go over to the other one, which immediately you can see is much darker. But the advantage of this one is it has lovely blacks. Really, really nice contrast between the black and the white on that display. And we're back to the uh, PNLC now which is running slightly faster because it's got fewer pixels to calculate on here. I've not attempted to synchronize the demo on both of them. So with the extra pixels on, on this one, it's taken a little while longer to get through everything. Right, and that's fully overhead and this one, the one on the right, is really getting reflections off the lights at the moment. So there you go, that's the demo running. You can see there how the little circle turning around really goes um, um, reflective at the top and there you can see the camera reflecting in the, uh, the mirror quality of the, the black pixels there. So under certain lights the uh, PNLC, despite the mirror finish, does look very black but still it's never quite as black as the uh, TFT style one here with the polarizer on it.
Right, finally, to uh, communicate with these displays, they operate with a SPI-like interface. So you have a serial clock line, serial data, and a serial chip select. You can use an Arduino's SPI library, but there's a, a few things to bear in mind. Um, first of all, the uh, chip select is active high, unlike normal SPI, which is generally active low. So you have to handle the uh, chip select yourself with a dedicated pin. Um, <clears throat> you can send your well. You're only supposed to send serial data at a rate of one megahertz, but the displays I've tried so far all quite happily cope with two or four megahertz SPI. And that's about it for SPI. The other three pins you need for well, you don't need for data is a display on and off pin, which you could just tie low or high, um, saving a microcontroller pin. Then you have two pins that set and provide a signal for the uh, display polarity inversion signal that you need to send. The first of these, the ext mode pin, that uh, lets you select whether the polarity inversion signal is generated by hardware on a micro, or in this case on the triple five in the middle, or whether you generate it in software and send the signal by flipping a bit in one of the command bytes that are sent anyway when you update the graphics on the display. Uh, the final pin is the XCOMIN pin. That is the pin that is used if you select the hardware um, option for X mode, and that will send the uh, square wave either from the 555 or microcontroller or whatever other source. So up to six pins data plus the voltage and ground um, is all you need to uh, connect this to a micro.